We're seven weeks into the season and plenty of teams are already outperforming expectations. So we are here to ask the burning question, who is the coach of the year? I'm Callum Toomey and today I'm joined by AFL.com.au's Jen Phelan and Mark McGowan. And Jen, you can kick things off. Who is it? Look, I'm going with a choice. It's probably not as obvious as some. Nathan Buckley for mine has Bucks. been... Bucks. He's been the coach of the year so far. He's managed to turn things around from... That, look, it looked like the season was over after two rounds. Everyone wanted him sacked. Looked like it was going to be more of the same for Pies supporters this year. But he's turned things around. They've won four of the last five. And yet he's been coaching under such duress since the pre-season. They've had so many injuries, over, which started back in the pre-season. They've filtered in through the, the early look at rounds. That. They're right at the top the there. Look at that. They've, they've lost 60 games due to injury, which means they've just had 60 players unavailable over the opening seven rounds. So, you know, compared to Richmond, they've had basically a full list to pick from. And it's also been the calibre of players that they've missed as well. Jamie Elliott, Daniel Wells, Levi Greenwood, Tyson Goldsack, they haven't played at all. Darcy Moore talked about all summer as the centrepiece of their new defence. And he, he barely play, he's played three games now. Ben Reid's missed two and Jordan Ngoi wasn't available to round four. Look, you mount a good argument. Mark, who's your pick? It's Brad Scott for me. I mean, ultimately, all a coach has are his players. And Brad Scott knows how to maximise what he has. I mean, let's, let's go through the list now. Sean Higgins, so-so, had potential, couldn't get on the park really, but never showed much. Was a half forward. Turn him into a superstar. Best and fairest winner, represented Australia last year. So he's clearly getting the best out of him. And what about Ben Jacobs? Everyone's talking about him. He shuts down every midfielder he plays on. Uh, but don't let me... You know, explain the story. Let, let's let Ben. Brad Scott just giving me his 100% backing and saying, hey, mate, like, don't worry about... Because I was out of contract. Don't worry about contracts. Just get your foot, what, foot right. We just want a healthy foot and I'll sort out the rest. It's fine. It was a massive, massive thing for me that I could just focus in on my rehab. If I didn't have that, in my head could have been all over the shop. I've got another player here to throw up as one well. More. Billy Hartung. OK. No one wanted him. Hawthorne certainly didn't want him. They'd given up on him. Clarko talked about as the best coach going around. But not even he could get Billy to win his share of contested ball. Now, if we look at the numbers, Billy is now winning career high as far as percentage of contested possessions. 34%. Had never been better than 27% before that. He's still got the line-breaking ability. He's still winning his fair share of the ball. Um, another great win for Brad Scott. He's a new player. Uh, Jen, I'm still not convinced on Buckley. What more can you give us on him? Mark speaks about having the players and how important that is, but it seems like the game plan might have finally dropped for the players at Collingwood. They're playing the way that Buckley wants them to play. It was, became evident in round four against Adelaide. Their use of handball through the middle of the ground, they broke the lines. They used the centre of the ground so, instead of the corridors, we, sorry, instead of the outside of the ground, which they've done so much over the last couple of years. They've also had success rotating the midfielders through the forward line. Um, Back in round three, they pushed so many players through there that they had the Blues completely and utterly confused as to who was kicking goals. So they've had a different midfielder bob up and kick a bag nearly every week since then. So they brought a degree of unpredictability to the forward line, which was probably out of necessity early on because of their injuries, but it's made it really hard for the opposition to keep track of since. The players are buying into this game plan and they're playing with passion and dare. They seem to be really enjoying it. He's given responsibility to a lot of players too. Tommy Phillips dominating as well. Mark, what else has impressed you about Scott? Smart list decisions. There's been so much talk about who has left the Kangaroos over the last couple of years. Obviously, Brent Harvey at the top of that list. But over the summer, he made a great decision to keep two of them. Jared Waite, Scott Thompson. Now, in February, he came out and actually said, Jared Waite, best footy in front of him at age 35. You, you, you laughed at that one. I think we all probably did. We, we probably did, yeah. to be honest. And that's why we're not coaches, Cal. And that's why Brad Scott <laughs> is so, so good. And... Jared's backed it up. He's, he's kicking goals, he's taking marks. And then not only that, Brad has picked the perfect time to give Jared, who has been injury prone, to be fair, give him a rest. Brings in Mason Wood, who's had to earn his spot. Six goals in the VFL last week. Comes in, four goals, career high, kicks the match winner. Brad Scott, another big, big tick. All right, Jen, one more reason why you're backing Bucks. Well, there's been some questions raised over the last couple of years about the Pies recruiting and which players Bucks has actually made better. But it looks like they've hit a few targets and it's been, been, been emerging this year. So, uh, Jaden Stevenson, he's come into the side. He's made an immediate impact. I know it's hard to miss when you're recruiting in the top six picks oh, of the draft. Oh, have. But, well, that's true, but the Pies weren't scared off by his heart condition. So many other clubs were. So they Sam Murray's been good too. Sam Murray's been very good. He's been part of their, their resurgent game plan off the back, off the, off the half back line. And Hoskin Elliott's also become important this year after coming over from the Giants. They also chose to stick with Josh Thomas after his drug suspension. He's ranked second in the team for centre clearances and he's proved he can go forward as well. So these sorts of players have started to stand up.
I'm almost convinced on Bucks now. What do you think of his year? Well, it's funny that Jen brings up good decisions that Bucks has made. It's, it's an interesting one. Is, is, Bucks, whack. is Bucks aware that it's not the under-12s and it is the AFL? You are allowed to tag. Well, if oh. you'd had Levi Greenwood at his disposal this season, maybe they would be So tagging. you've only got one option, obviously, by the sound of that. So, <laughs> Dane Zorko at the weekend hasn't had more than 20 touches all year. So what does Bucks do? Let's not tag him. And what does he have? 34 touches, four goals. The winless lines almost knock off the pies. And then on top of that, I think everyone still remembers the Tom Mitchell 54 in round one. Couldn't tag him. And a year earlier, he got 50. So Bucks... Just doesn't learn his lessons. OK, well, before we go, how about a couple of other coaches that we haven't mentioned? Damien Hardwick's the obvious one. Well, They're going pretty well, the Tigers, Jim. Going back to what I said about Collingwood early on about their injuries, the Tigers, they've had 16 players miss games over seven rounds. It's pretty hard to, you know, to mess things up when you've got basically the whole list to choose from. Easy to win a flag for the Tigers, <laughs> according to him. What, Mark, Maybe what about, not quite. <laughs> what about Adam Simpson? Yeah, could have easily gone with the, the West Coast Eagles mentor, but for me, the lack of talent for North is what won it over. You look at the Eagles list, let's go through the Kennedy, McGovern, Gaff, Natanui, Darling, okay. Moon, Yo, okay. it goes on. You've made your points and good job guys. Both. I'm not sure which way I'm going to side on this one. We want to know who you think is the coach of the year so far. So head to afl.com.au to have your say. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time for another burning question.